You know, team, we're trying to get all sorts of voices, conservatives, libertarians, and others to swing by the Freedom Hut when they're in New York City and spend some time chatting with us. We had Kristen Tate, who is an author as well as a columnist. Her, her latest book is coming out in a couple of weeks. It's called Government Gone Wild. She swung by the Freedom Hut to have a chat about what she, what she sees going on with the election right now. Here it is. Kristen, thank you so much for joining. Thanks for having me, Buck. So we know that Donald just had quite a loss handed to him in Wisconsin. Looks like the Cruz campaign has got some momentum. Do you think that there's a real hope that they're going to be able to settle this one way or the other before the convention? Or are we just on a straight path to a convention, a contested convention, uh, coming up in July? Look, I think it's very likely that we will be going to a contested convention. I think it's, I don't think Cruz is going to get the delegates he needs. I think Trump has a small chance that he might. But the bottom line here is that Trump will likely go into this convention with the highest number of delegates. So when he gets there, if the GOP elites try to hijack this thing and give someone else the nomination, I think we might see the end of the Republican Party. So you think that there could be a sort of political nuclear implosion if anybody other than Trump or Cruz. I have to say, I actually agree with you. I don't see how anyone is uh, is handed this in almost like Hail Caesar fashion, right? Like we're just going to all of a sudden it's a veto. accept. Yeah, it's a veto on the will of the American people. It's totally, uh, I mean, you, you got to keep in mind, Trump supporters specifically, I think, are very fed up with the, with the GOP. Uh, they gave the GOP the House and the Senate, and nothing has changed. Obama, Obama gets everything he wants. There's very little pushback. These people are fed up. They have stood in the snow to vote for Donald Trump. They are passionate about Donald Trump. And if the GOP tries to tell these folks, sit down, shut up, and I'll tell you who to support, I'll tell you they're not going to show up in November. Yeah, even if they offer somebody up, and we're hearing these whispers already, like, uh, like a Paul Ryan, he's about as controversial as an oatmeal raisin cookie, but it doesn't <laughs> matter because he didn't get votes to, to be the, the next president of the United States from anybody. And I know Kasich is staying in it at this point. And even people who've been relatively friendly to the idea of Kasich having a voice, let's see how he does in Ohio. He has mathematically zero chance of getting the nomination beforehand, and I just can't fathom how he thinks he comes out of the convention as the guy that the party has handed the reins to, and what, Cruz and Trump supporters are just going to fall in line behind him? I, I think that that's an absolute non-starter. So we seem to agree on the, uh, on the reality of Cruz and Trump. Uh, as the only possibilities here. If the GOP is serious about winning, maybe right. they're not. Maybe exactly. they want, Maybe they're just willing to scuttle the whole thing. But you're also with me, from what I understand, on the never Hillary side of things, in that <laughs> you will, if need be, support Donald Trump, even though he's not your preferred or favorite candidate. You're not a Trumper, you're not a Trump supporter. You will support Trump against Hillary. Why Absolutely. is that? Absolutely. Absolutely, because I'm pragmatic. And uh, if you don't show up and vote for Trump, if Trump is the nominee, you're essentially helping Hillary. Uh, Hillary would be a nightmare on every issue. So I think Trump is a very imperfect candidate, but I think that he's a heck of a lot better than Hillary. And uh, of course, I would, Trump, I would support Trump if he were the nominee. Now, are you seeing any libertarian inflection? I know you're a libertarian and not a hardcore libertarian. <laughs> you know, you don't believe in the, el the elimination of the state. No roads. You know, we're not going to pay for roads. You know, this is what people say about libertarians all the time. But we haven't really, as far as I've been able to been able to gather so far, we haven't seen uh, where the sort of Rand Paul support has gone in this campaign yet. It really hasn't been apparent. I haven't seen a lot uh, from from either of the candidates that would be sort of uh, red meat libertarianism. They haven't hit those as as major issues, with the possible exception of Trump on non-intervention on foreign policy. Which, depending on the day, he's a non-interventionist. Right. He's a big interventionist. He, he, he wants nukes to go to South Korea and Japan. He's all over the place on that. But I do think that Ted Cruz, because of his constitutionalism and limited government approach, is actually more friendly to libertarian, uh, to a libertarian mindset, libertarian tendencies than has necessarily come across during the race so far. What do you make of that? I completely agree with that. Uh, with the exception of social issues, I think libertarians are very turned off by Ted Cruz's stance on abortion and also his, his stance on the drug wars. But uh, I think a lot of libertarians, regardless of whether it's Trump or Cruz, will stay home. In I, have to say, I don't even I don't even know where Cruz stands on the drug. I can't remember the last time a candidate, one of the GOP candidates, even mentioned the drug war or legalization. Have they 
Have they taken a stand? I mean, Trump's probably taken a few stands, but have either of the remaining candidates gotta, made it clear where they are on this? You got to keep in mind, though, libertarians are tend to be very much purists. Okay, and I have this tendency to want to be a purist too, but. I also try to tell libertarians you need to be realistic. Um, if they hear one thing from Cruz that they don't like about the drug wars that he said two years ago, they won't vote for him. So I, one of my big uh, goals in getting involved in media is to try to tell libertarians and conservatives we need to stop being such purists. We need to come together around one candidate, even if we don't agree with them on every little issue. This is how the GOP is going to destroy itself if we keep doing this. So the infighting has got to stop. We have got to come around one candidate, and that's the only way we are going to succeed in November. Let's have some fun and talk about the Democrats for a minute, because <laughs> now you can just say absolutely whatever you want, and everybody watching is going to say, great, because we're going to talk about how the Democrats are having their own set of problems right now. Bernie Sanders went in for an interview with the New York Daily News editorial board earlier earlier in, in, the, in this week, and he flopped, to, to put it mildly. He had a really bad time there. His, uh, his brand of of democrat socialism that seems to appeal very much to the the, the far left and, and the hard left in this country there's not a lot of substance beneath it but it does at least bring energy into the picture whereas with hillary she is the ultimate establishment candidate and i think that we could see a problem with uh, hillary's going to be the nominee the party's going to make sure right. debbie wasserman schultz is going to do whatever has to be done in order to make sure that hillary clinton is the nominee if she has to go door to door <laughs> she will make sure hillary clinton is the nominee but I wonder if Bernie Sanders' leftist support will translate in a way that is substantive and helpful for Hillary's campaign. I think some of them are too turned off by Hillary to go along for the ride. Absolutely. All my friends are Bernie supporters. Uh, they're rabid. They love the guy. They all tell me they will never vote for Hillary. The more they get excited about Bernie, the more they hate Hillary. Hillary represents everything young people hate. She's old. She reeks of establishment. She's stiff. She's unlikable. And uh, Bernie, he just has this passion behind him because he's able to get young people excited. He, he he represents something new. Um, he, he has this outsider vibe that young people really love. So I think that November will be all about mobilization. I don't think Hillary will be able to mobilize a lot of young people. And I think that Bernie will be largely responsible for that. Last question. Trump or Cruz? Either of them could beat Hillary Clinton, you think, in a general? You know, Hillary is such a weak candidate that either of them should be able to beat Hillary. But the question will be, again, will the GOP stop infighting? The GOP may destroy itself. So we will see if uh, whichever guy gets this nomination, if the other camp will be willing to come around them. If they're not, Hillary might win. All right. Kristen Tate, <laughs> thank you so much for joining. Great to have thank you, you here. Thank you for having me. All right, team, on the flip side of this break, Got to come clean about something. You're going to want to hear it. I'll be right back. Once you cut a tree down, what do you do about the stump? Grind it down with a DR Stump Grinder. 